Hello, hello everybody. How are you all doing? Welcome to another session of Unreal Engine 4, where my friend Strange Bro Gem and I learn how to use the Unreal Engine. Uh, so that eventually we can make our own little project. We are still on the working with audio section. Um I'll put it on the screen in a minute. First thing first, I'm gonna do some salad and then I'm gonna hop on into James stage he just started it uh, anyways uh, down in the description below there's a link to the power shop where you can purchase energy mixes, sleep mixes, hydration, shakers and even stickers and if you use creator, if you use creator code BLACKHEART you will get a 10% discount and help to support the channel in the process anyways let's uh, Okay, this stuff is on. Let's hop on into Jim's little stage. I think he already started. Part in just a second. Matter of fact, here he is actually in the stage. So I'm gonna go ahead and invite him to speak. Hello there, Jim. How you doing? Uh, not bad, my friend. And yourself? I'm doing okay. That's good to hear. Okay. Um. Yeah, I was just letting everybody know that, you know, I'm, I'm sorry for kind of being late for starting up the stream, but I mean, it, it kind of happens every Friday, to be honest. Uh, yeah. I can get myself moving fast enough to really take care of everything that I need to, need to take care of in real life, so... Yeah, real yeah. life comes first. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I just need to get off my lazy ass a little bit faster. <laughs> <laughs> So, but I mean, you know, I, I, I also like to enjoy, you know, uh, having some off time as well. So, yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, we're going to be continuing on with our, uh, unreal study session. Now, let's see. Where did we leave off yesterday? I we, think we were did the problem with platform specific audio APIs. Yeah, we did that part. That's what I was. That's what I was thinking as well. We left off at the audio mixers the solution, right? So, yeah. Um. Now I haven't gotten any feedback to my knowledge. Uh, I haven't gotten any time for yeah. for like. Uh, comments or anything along those lines so I mean if anybody wants to add any comments you know concerning our unreal videos I mean they're more than welcome to do so as long as it's constructive you know like hey we have some questions about sound well maybe help us out if you're you know if you know um, you know we'd be really appreciative of it um, but obviously you know that's if you want to um so we're going to be continuing on with the study of all these topics for unreal because we need to have a, at least a basic understanding of them um i don't really want to jump into uh you know trying to figure out on on the fly trying to build you know some kind of clone game and messing up big time during during it not to say that yeah. we're going to be absolutely perfect when we actually build it but you know i uh, i still want to have at least some idea <laughs> <laughs> you know some some kind of concept about how to actually do you know what we need to do so um so that's why we're kind of going through all these topics with the four point uh Two seven documentation, so you guys can follow along if you want to. Um, then we're gonna be doing a clone. Yep. What we're gonna do be doing, I don't really know, but you yeah, haven't decided. We'll figure that. Yet. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we'll we'll figure it out once we get there. Um, and then again, we're gonna be considering. You know, we're gonna try to do a game. You know, ourselves that isn't a clone. Um, whether it's, 
you know, the old game that I was trying to do on Unity but was failing miserably on, you know, GGG, or if it's, like, something else, you know, different, I don't really know. Hmm. We'll get to that. Yeah. So, that's another, that's another topic for another day. So, um, but for the time being, we're just going to keep on going through the instructions of this and and learn as we go and maybe uh maybe we'll learn a little bit more about audio although yeah, like, there's a topic here that's like whoo, yeah uh, a little a little beyond us right at this moment in time but i mean like i said who knows we might learn we might learn it all by you know by the time we've made a couple games <laughs> you never know so okay. Right. So, the solution to all of the end, let's, let's get into the topic here. The audio mixer is the solution. So, the solution to all of these issues is a single multi-platform audio rendering API, what we call the audio mixer. With the audio mixer, since there is one common code base for all platforms, feature parity, uh, feature parity is much more easily achieved. Development time is optimized as programmers are able to implement a new feature once and can expect it to work on all platforms. Testing, documentation, and sound designer implementation and mixing is also simplified. Apart from the subset of unavoidable and specific cases, things will sound the same and behave the same across platforms. I mean, that's... <laughs> yeah, at least that's the hope, you know. They, yeah, they you might want to put you know, that in quotations. <laughs> Exactly, you know, it's like, you know, you might want it to sound the same and behave the same across all platforms, but let's face it, all the platforms everywhere are not built the same, <laughs> you know, um, Xbox is built differently than, than the PlayStation, which is built differently than the Switch, which is built differently than the PC, you know, it's like, there's a lot of differences when you when you look at them I mean and let's not even get into Apple <laughs> Apple's in its own, uh, entirely different world <laughs> you know um, and you know hey if they want to keep on doing that that's that's their business right um, you know I just don't really want to use any of their products because you know typically it's it's very expensive to uh, work with their hardware. So, I mean, if you think, you know, you look at a common PC and it's like, yeah, a couple thousand. You know, you look at, you know, the equivalent on Apple and it's like, you know, maybe add a thousand more. It's like, <laughs> you know, it's like, ouch. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, you know, they they do their own thing there so you know on, on one hand sure it's perfectly fine you know it's a free country right you can do whatever the hell you want but on the other hand you can't integrate Apple with other hardware very easily you're gonna have to do a lot of work to try to make sure that you know everything kind of conforms with between the two because there isn't really any, you know, the standards of PC don't necessarily apply to Apple. So, that's all. Hmm. So, uh, supporting new platforms is fast. It often takes just a few days and a couple of hundred lines of code. Writing an interface for audio engine plugins becomes not only very doable, but a primary avenue for innovation. In addition, fixing bugs and optimizing code benefit all platforms. Sure. Hmm. Um, let's see. Um, I mean, hmm. I don't know if it. I, I would say you know supporting new platforms is fast because I mean. It like I how said, much if you, if, it changed. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, like I, you know, like we discussed what yesterday. 
uh, where, you know, there are some platforms that don't even send out documentation concerning their, um, their machine and, you know, everybody's going to have to, you know, if they want to support said machine, they're going to have to, you know, <laughs> are they some kind of, you know, they're going to have to, um, look into a crystal ball just to see, you know, what, <laughs> what functions they need to use, you know, um, you know, you need to have the right kind of documentation for that. So, I, you know, I don't know if supporting new platforms would be considered fast. No. But, uh, I don't know. And, you know, maybe it, it, you know, I don't know what the process is, you know, at, um, you know, uh, is it that built that made Unreal? Was it Valve? I think it's Valve, right? No. Valve has the Source Engine. Right, 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 right. Source Engine. Silly me. Uh, Epic da -da -da -da. is the Unreal. Epic Games, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and they've, you know, obviously they've done a really good job with the Unreal Engine over the years. Um, yep. So, uh, but, you know, so I don't know exactly, you know, what all they do, you know, when, like, a new platform comes out, you know, how are they able to, you know, what's the process that they use to look at the new platform and try to work with the Unreal Engine to, you know, allow for that, um, you know, the merging into the new platform. You know, I don't really know. Obviously, you know, they have some legacy code that they can probably, you know, go with, with, you know, all the other previous, previous platforms. So there's not really that much change along those lines they're just basically going to be kind of looking at the they're going to try to look at the api for the new platform and go okay how can we you know take the code that we've already built and allow for it to integrate with the new platform so maybe it is fast for them now the Well, it wasn't that way when in the beginning. So, um, all right, so uh, uh, let's see. There will still remain platform specific challenges. Each platform has different CPU and memory capabilities or different hardware support options. However, in cases of CPU or memory deficiencies, the audio memory, uh, the audio mixer can employ features that automatically reduce the CPU load via feature disablement, quality reductions, and so on, or memory load, memory pruning at cook, automatic down sampling, and down quality encoding. Sound designers and audio programmers can tune the audio mixer to hit a given performance and memory target for a given platform. So, obviously there's some uh, keywords being used here that I'm not all that familiar with like downsampling um, not quite sure exactly what that is referring to directly um, mm. memory pruning at cook um, you know I, I I might be able to you know make an educational assessment as to what they're tr trying to mean here but you know again i don't i wouldn't know like a hundred percent if that's correct um and down quality encoding which i would um, i would imagine you know hey um if the quality isn't you know working the way it should then maybe it you know, automatically, like, reduces down the quality, automatically, maybe? You know, I don't know. Very, very likely. Yeah. 
but how would it know like hey i'm not hitting the benchmarks you know or you know like how how, how would it know like hey i'm not hitting all these benchmarks you know i should i should lower myself or something like that you know i don't really know but if that is indeed what it's going through you know how would it know um so but obviously you know if if they do have these kind of features on there then that that could potentially mean some really good useful tools for us the programmers for a new game you know putting that information in so that hey if you know if we do like a mobile game or something like that you know it it will check the limitations of that mobile phone and maybe automatically set the values for that phone so it doesn't actually explode it <laughs> it's like oh hey i'm trying out this new game you know it's, and it's basically doing everything to my cpu oh my god the cpu is super hot up ah! you know <laughs> <laughs> not to say that that actually happens but still um you know uh, at least i would hope that the phone doesn't necessarily explode in your hands. I mean, there have been... Yeah, there was, a, I believe, a Galaxy model that its battery would blow up, literally. Yeah. Yep. So, um... One would hope that the phone was shut off prior to um, any overheat to explode <laughs> but you know you never know um but you know i'm just i'm just putting that out there let's say you know um so it you know maybe maybe it does do that again i don't know we'll we'll have to we'll have to see so why it's called the audio mixer Another word for audio rendering is audio mixing. Okay. Since the word rendering is used most exclusively in uh, Unreal Engine 4 to refer to graphics, you know, which, again, that's yeah. something that I'm used to, so yeah, Same. okay. We decided to call the new audio renderer the audio mixer. Okay. However, this decision has sometimes caused confusion within the audio community and others due to the ambiguity of the word mixing. Okay, it makes sense. It can be confused with the operation of volume, loudness, mixing. Okay. Um, makes sense. You know, um, you know, here I'm thinking the audio mixer is uh, something that just basically handles all the the processes of like you know loudness and so on and so forth you know as as a you know like a mixing board you know you're you're changing the volumes and settings and so on and so forth you're doing the reverb you know that's what I was thinking that it was all about yeah but they're also including the rendering into it as well so okay um. The Unreal Engine 4 audio mixer is essentially doing the same thing that a hardware mixing console does. It adds together sound sources after processing them through a variety of parameters and effects processors, including through submixing and master effects processors. So, yeah, but, you know, it is essentially like a mixing board. Like, um, I don't know if you've seen any of those pictures or anything like those. I have, yes. And I have yeah, seen on, a me... virtual mixing board back on my old jobs. Yeah, let me let me see if I can find a volume uh, mixing board. Let me see if I can get like a image for it or something like that. So there we go. So on my stream, a stream, I'm just kind of showing, you know, like you know the the common mixing board that I'm that I'm familiar with. Well, not familiar, familiar, but you know, I've I've seen enough around. I've been enough, <laughs> you know, I've been on enough enough 
you know, where I've seen this, you know, commonly shown in, like, recording studios, for example. Yeah. Um, you know, so, you know, you see a board like this and you're like going, oh, okay, you know, so, you know, if this is what the Unreal Engine is trying to go for, which, you know, makes sense, right? You know, you're you're trying to like lower like different channels, or you're you know trying to, you know, you know like maybe um, there's like you know certain pitches or something like that that's that's causing problems or you know whatever, you know. They have this board to try to um, uh, make it pleasing to the ear. So. Yeah. So I would imagine that that's essentially essentially what the Unreal Engine audio mixer is kind of all about. But that's I mean, sound I, in a way that way. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, as they stated, uh, their audio rendering is also added into that as well. So, but so it's it makes sense. Makes sense. So. All right, moving on. Yep. So, the audio mixer architecture, the platform layer. The audio mixer has a minimum, minimal platform-specific API layer. The platform API wraps all the necessary details of accessing audio hardware for our various platforms. And this layer deals with querying hardware capabilities and where needed hardware state changes and sets up a multi-platform audio mixer to feed audio to the hardware. Some platforms require additional code to handle a variety of platform-specific nuances, like state interruptions, app suspension, device swapping, and so on. While in other cases, support was added to leverage platform-specific enhancements, like hardware-accelerated decoding. In these cases, there can still be a good deal of platform-specific code required. Note that this platform-specific layer is also dealing with some of our remaining platform-specific features in Unreal Engine 4, uh, like creating runtime decoders for our various codexes. Okay. Um, I think that was fairly... Um, descriptive enough for yeah. the most part i didn't really see too many problems with this particular paragraph or you know these particular paragraphs that were like uh really kind of blew my mind for the most part um now obviously you know state interruptions app suspension device swapping you know we don't really know you know or at least i could you know, again, I can make an educated guess as to what these might entail, but, you know, would that be, um, would it be correct, though? That's, that's the problem, you know. They didn't actually state outright, you know, what, you know, no, what there these... There are no examples of what they are. Yeah, so, I mean, I can... I can make some assumptions, like, hey, app suspension, like maybe the, um, like maybe the person turned off the console, like right, right then and there, right? right. You know, with it, like, or maybe there was a power a power outage, and you know, there goes there goes the game, you know. So, you don't necessarily need it continuing to run or anything along those lines right you know um so but then again you know if it, if you're doing, dealing with the power outage i guess you know it wouldn't necessarily run anyway um but maybe maybe the user decided that they wanted to shut down the app like right then and there like um like say you're playing warframe for example, that you know, me, me and Blackheart's gonna be playing Warframe later on tonight, right? Right. And you know, we're playing the game. You know, you're hearing the sound, you're hearing the combat and the music, and so on and so forth. You're getting going through that. 
and like you know I suddenly click the X accidentally on on the application and it shuts down are you still hearing the music the sounds the combat and stuff like that you know afterwards more than likely not no. right no you know I think this was more uh, of a common issue on older games true I do remember some oh. older games when I would shut it down and I could still hear some of the sound effects or music still running. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's let's face it, you know, that uh, or, or, you know, for for one thing, obviously, you know, um, as as technology continues to advance and stuff like that, it it might be a little bit harder to um, integrate with older more archaic code <laughs> <laughs> um, because um, some of the older code might be deprecated for example right so it might be saying hey I want to use these functions you know that your you know more advanced version no longer uses right you know like hey I want to use this function well, you can't because it's no longer there. How does the, you know, how does the game handle that, right? Right. So, um, and you know, back then they were still trying to figure everything out as well. So, um, you know, hearing the audio when you shut it down and when it, you know, shuts itself down, was, well, obviously, you know, fairly common because they didn't really. Uh, they might not have had like an engine to do that kind of work before you know it was all kind of done you know with game code or something like that so it just kept on sending you know the like the CPU kept on like looking at the code for some reason and just kept on playing the audio over and over and over again or something like that you, you never know you know um, that's that's one of those things where it's like you know uh, older code can be a little problematic <laughs> but um but I mean you know as as we continue moving forward then you know uh, things you know problems like that you know hopefully get reduced over time and uh, but at the same time as programmers we shouldn't necessarily forget about those mistakes either you know um you know, take for example um, the old Y2K debacle, right? Um, now, for those of you that don't really know, uh, prior to 2000, um, the uh, typically the the you know they the programmers typically wanted to save on memory as much as they could because the memory was limited back then. Um, yeah. They only had so much space that they could use uh, to do to do everything that they wanted to do. So they they cut corners wherever they could to make sure that everything was uh, working the way they wanted it to work. Well, one of the shortcuts that they did was they reduced the year um, from the four digits that it is now, obviously in coding standards. Um, they had it down to a you know, two-digit number, so that it was it was just displaying, um, you know, the basically the decade of it. Okay, so it would show, you know, the 80s, the 90s, but once it hit the, you know, once it hit 2000, the worry was that all the computers would set itself back to the 1900s you know before computers were even made <laughs> you know <laughs> um hell before you know the, the, you know back then you know cars were barely you know being made at that point um so um the the I mean, they were still being made, but still. Um, 
but it's it's one of those things where it's like you know if the date rolled back to the 1900s you know at that at that switchover then you know everybody that was born by Whoa. a certain date are no longer alive <clears throat> you know kind of thing you know it's like all these programs that are saying like hey you know we we need to make sure that you're uh, uh you know uh, we we want to make sure that you're 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 indeed like 65 years old oh wait you're not born yet so you know why would we send you out like you know um social security checks or something like that it's like um um wait what <laughs> <laughs> you know but the problem was was that they were like going okay we need to solve this now you know because they were they were worried that if it switched over it could cause a lot of problems you know so but the problem was was that all the programmers that did all that work initially they were either you know, like gone gone like they they'd already passed away or um they were out of the industry for the most part you know um so you know either they had to get their newer programmers to try to do the work to try to uh, fix that's that problem switch the two date to a four date um, or they they had to um, you know go back to the uh, um, you know to the old programmers to try to figure out you know what they did and you know change the code so that it was no longer a two digit but a four digit so it was it was chaotic <laughs> <laughs> It was chaotic during sure. that time. So, <clears throat> um, you know, a lot of people were, you know, kind of scared about, you know, uh, well, it's going to end, you know, because um, they were afraid that, hey, um, if if this code doesn't, if the code doesn't get changed at all, then then everybody's like. You know, you wouldn't necessarily have like applications anymore, or you know, you you would have problems with a person's social security and age, and um, you know, any kind of records would would be messed up because now, um, like an old housing contract, for example, would be pretty much null and void, for example, right? So I mean, there was there was a lot of potential disasters, ha you know, that could have happened at that that at that moment. Not to say that you know, you know, there was, I'm, you know, there was still paper evidence and stuff like that, right? But still, there's a lot of, um, you know, there <laughs> there was a lot of fear. <laughs> yeah. Along those lines, so. Uh, sorry for going on a tangent. No problem. All right. Um. Let's let's move on to the next topic here. And oh boy, it's a it's a pretty long one. Yep. Uh, buffer generation. Uh, different platforms have different methods of feeding audio to its hardware. Some platform APIs are designed to push audio to the hardware into a queue. Client app is responsible for keeping audio queued up. Other APIs are callback based and will call into client code when the hardware needs more audio. In both cases, the audio mixer employs a multi buffer scheme that generates future audio buffers while hardware is rendering the current buffer, such as the buffer you are listening to. Okay. Um. Now, what I'm, what I'm a little worried about, um, you know, obviously, uh, for this, 
you know, they're talking about how, you know, one audio is being pushed onto the hardware, into a queue, right? Right. Well, typically, you know, when you when you're reading that, you're like, okay, well, that's that's all long well good. You're showing like, you're you're talking about one sound for the for the speaker, right? But let's face it, you know, there's some, uh, you know. When you're talking audio, you you could be having some things that that are happening at the exact, same exact time, such as you know, uh, music, you know, sound effects, um, you know, speech, whatever, right? So it's like, mm. okay, you know, uh, you know how how does the hardware go about tackling like multiple sounds that need to, need to be played at the same time? Right. Hmm. Um, you know, sure, it's it's great to have like a multi-buffer scheme that you know you can put like multiple audios into and stuff like that. That's that's great. That's that's all well and good. But you know, how do they handle trying to play multiple buffers at the same time? You know, um, you know, it's it's great. You know that they that they have that right you know especially when you have like multiple sounds that are trying to come you know that are that are trying to be played at the same time but how does the hardware handle that mm. but uh, let's move on maybe maybe they'll explain hopefully they explain it yeah if the audio mixer takes too long to render the next buffer of audio, the buffer queue starves for push APIs. Or if there is no audio available when the API calls back for callback APIs, there will be an audi uh, audible gap in the playback. This is called an underrun, sometimes called starvation, and should be avoided at all, all costs as it always sounds very bad. <laughs> I mean, sure, you know. Um, you know, I guess you might say, you know, if you're like listening to me, for example, and I'm like, you keep on hearing me go, and, and, it, it, it with, that, you know, you know, those kind of gaps, and you're like going, uh, <laughs> you know, what's, what's going on there, right? Right. So, um, now it could be, you know, it could be that starvation might be along the lines of like maybe the information isn't there so it doesn't it has those gaps in there or maybe um maybe it's it's not playing back that sound or you know it wants to play that sound but unfortunately it kind of puts that gap in there so you're like um so you're saying, you know, um, um, STA, and then a couple seconds later, RT for start, you know, right? So it's like, st art, <laughs> <laughs> you know, then it's like, you know, that kind of starvation, maybe, you know, um, so, um, hard, you know not quite sure you know it might it might apply for for both i don't know i don't remember now but um an underrun will cause sudden discontinu discontinuity in the audio stream and is perceived as a noise burst either as a pop or, or for a short underrun or stutter for short and persistent underruns or a major dropout if audio of audio for long running audio on the runs. The sudden amplitude change can even cause damage to audio receivers or speakers. Ooh. Okay. In most cases, under runs are due to CPU saturation. The audio mixer is doing too much work in the time it has. In other cases, it might indicate a blockage in the Unreal Engine 4 task gra graph for async decoding or, or synthesis and some other problem or some other problem 
It's also sometimes difficult to distinguish a click or pop in the audio from an underrun or vice versa. Okay, interesting. Okay, so what's interesting here is that they're kind of giving a little bit of a description about, you know, what you might hear in an underrun. So now you might know how to maybe deal with it afterwards. Like if, like if you hear, you know, like a pop, you know, for the audio, then you know that it's a short underrun and therefore, you know, you might go, okay, how do I solve this short underrun? You know, so, um, you know, stutter for persistent underruns. You know, so it's it's one of those things where it's like, okay, you know, this is this is useful information in that you know we can, um, if we're actually hearing it, you know, in our audio, uh, then we might be able to kind of troubleshoot how to go about fix fixing it. You know, so so I like that. So. Um, and of course, you know, if, if we need to, if there's, there's p parts where it's like, you know, hey, if you're dealing with the, you know, this kind of issue, like later on, then they'll, they'll provide us, you know, ways of trying to fix it. Or maybe even the on, uh, on engine itself determines it too. Maybe it'll go, hey, um, I'm getting a pop from the audio you know, which is caused by a short under uh, underrun. These are s some solutions they could do to fix it or something like that. I don't know. I'm mm, just no. thinking out loud. <laughs> so, uh, you know, audio mixer is doing too much work for the time it has. So, um, so it might it might mean that you, we might need to, like, um, if the CPU is being um, overloaded with audio, then we, you know, we might need to lower the amount of audio going to it. You know. Yeah. Uh, you know, like before, there was the um, concurrency. I you know, think it was, yeah. Um, so, so if there's if there's like too much audio going into the CPU, we can then use concurrency a little bit more, and you know limit how much audio is going in there. For example, right? Yeah. So, so obviously there's ways to try to combat you know, combat and underrun or whatnot, but, yeah. So, on the other th end of things, it's possible to generate too much audio up front. In these cases, game events will lag further and further from real time. And this is perceived as latency. In extreme cases, this is called an overrun. And there's also something to avoid. Makes sense. Real-time audio engines need to find the balance between underrunning and overrunning. Underrunning is avoided at all costs, while overrunning, which is required to some degree to prevent underrunning, needs to be below the threshold of perception. Okay. I mean, makes sense. Um, I wonder what would be like a good example of an overrun. Mm, let me think. I think I have very few cases but I don't remember the game. I think it was a shooter where I had this sort of situation where sun was like kinda lagging I can't remember now, I don't know what game it was. 
Oh, I th I think I I think I get. Um, I think I can think of something. I uh, I mean, um, when there's an old movie that I I there's there's one scene that I absolutely love where. Uh, it's called sound. Uh, it's called uh, singing in the rain. Sounds familiar. Um, and the the scene in question is that they're you know they're uh, finally getting um, you know voice actors to actually say their lines for the very first time in the movie theater. You know before it was just silent movies. You just have you know the actors acting out. You know, or you know, trying to, you know, uh, emote the scenes kind of thing, and the dialogue would just show up on screen, and then you'd have like maybe a piano up front, you know, just playing the 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 song, right? Right. You know, for the movie. Um, so that's that's typically how it was, you know, before, right? But now they were like, on, oh, hey, you know, we can actually add audio to two movies you know at at the same time you know hey you know we can add this in right hmm. uh so this this you know the movies in this one movie studios you know that is you know focused on our main actors they they try to try to do that they get the hardware and stuff like that they try working with it and they they put out their very first movie that's it's a talking movie yay right <laughs> um, and there was one part where the audio went out of sync with the um, with the movie itself. So you um, you had this dialogue between, I guess, the damsel in distress and the main villain, and um. He's, and you know the villain was like on no one can save you you're mine forever and the you know the lady's going no nope. and the guy's like yes 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 uh, <laughs> but the audio gets out of sync so now you have the lady you know uh, shaking her head no but actually say yes 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 and the, you know the guy's going nope. <laughs> you know shaking his head <laughs> up and up and down uh, so it's it just hilarious scene. Um, just, just seeing that, you know, and you could just, um, and obviously this serious movie that they were wanting to make, uh, you know, that was filled with drama and stuff like that turned into a comedy. Everybody was just laughing <laughs> hilariously, uh, about the sound gaps that were being made on there. Right. Right. Um, <laughs> So, uh, hilarious movie. I, I, you know, I enjoy watching it. You know, uh, I would, I would recommend that old, very old movie um, to anybody that has not seen it. Um, but I can imagine that that kind of sound, like, um, uh, problem, could be, could maybe can be considered, you know, a. F a problem with like latency or overrun meaning that you know you had a little bit of a of a problem like the cpu didn't it was getting too much or something like that so it just kind of said okay it, we're I, I i'm dealing with too much here we're gonna have to you know uh i i, I know i gotta take care of this um I gotta take care of the mathematicals and graphics and stuff like that. I'll deal with the audio a little bit later, and suddenly you have that effect happening. You know, where now, like you, you try to, you try to like shoot a gun, and then like ten minutes later, you actually hear the sound effect or something like that, right? Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, there's there's a bit of a problem. <laughs> so. Um. So that's that's what I'm that's what I'm thinking is kind of going over there. Yeah, it definitely or, sounds that way. Yeah. So, uh, I think we're probably gonna do this last paragraph here, and then we're probably gonna go ahead and 
close it down because this next one is probably going to take a little bit longer than yeah. three minutes. So yeah, we but have finding the plenty to to go over. Yeah, uh, finding the right balance can be tricky and is often platform dependent. Indeed. Uh, to that end, the audio mixer is architect to allow sound designers or audio programmers to choose per platform the size of the audio buffers to render per audio buffer render. Wait, what? The size of the audio buffers to render per audio buffer render. Uh... Uh, um... Okay, um, sure, um, and how many buffers to render ahead of the currently audible buffer? Okay. That, you now, this, this sentence sounds the, perfectly fine. How many buffers to render ahead of the current audio buffer? Understandable on, on that, makes sense. Uh, but the other one, the <laughs> previous one, is like, uh, wait, what? Well, yeah, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Um, I, the second render should be there. Um, the the size of the audio buffers to render per audio buffer render. Yeah, that last render, so. I feel like it shouldn't be there. Well, I. Okay, so, um, you know, it, I can't say that it's completely wrong, though, but it's really weird to read. Yeah. Um, because, you know, obviously you have the audio buffers that are generated and obviously you're rendering them to be able to be played, right? So, um, and obviously, depending on the platform, you may have multiple different audio buffers. And, you know, you have to render each and every single last one of them, right? Right. So, per audio buffer render, that makes sense, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, so, but now we look at the first half. The size of the audio buffers, meaning like, hey, you, we create these audio buffers to put the audio into, to be played. So you need to know how large those audio buffers need to be. Um, and then you need to go through the process of rendering them. Putting them both together, on the other hand, is like, okay. <laughs> yeah, it just sounds weird. Yeah, it definitely sounds weird, but at the same time, it it still kind of makes sense a little, <laughs> kind of. Kind of. <sighs> so, um, okay. But uh, I think that's probably where we're going to have to call it, my friend. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, like you said, there's still plenty of topics that, you know, plenty of paragraphs, plenty of things that we're going to need to kind of go through anyway. So. Yeah, there's still uh, 16 well, more topics left. Yeah. So. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll continue. leave it for tomorrow. Yeah. We'll continue on with the audio mixer threading model tomorrow. So, um, any any questions or anything that you'd like to maybe add in before we kind of? I can't end think of anything. This? I can't think okay. of anything right now. Okay. I'm assuming that you're you're pretty much good with what we've all covered. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, so, I, I do like that they've, uh, it, it doesn't feel 
like they're still kind of adding in like keywords here and there you know like starvation for example but here's the thing they're actually kind of describing it yeah you know in a way that you know is is understandable to me so you know i kind of like this this overall description that they're doing here you know because at least i get to kind of understand what they're they're talking about so we can um use that you know later on not to say that we're going to be perfect at it but you know we can still use it so yeah so i i kind of like uh, i've i've i'm really liking this overview so far so i think this i think this entire overview has been pretty much um well explained yeah you know or at least i'm getting that kind of impression from it yeah uh what about yourself how do you feel about it yeah i do appreciate that they take the time to explain a few things So, so that's good. That's yeah. good. Um, you know, uh, it really sucks when you 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 know you don't get a like a really good description of of anything, or they're like you know, hey, you know, here's this information. If you don't know what we're talking about, then well, oh well, you know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know. It's one of those things where it's like, come on, guys, you know, help us out here. We're we're trying to learn, we're trying to learn Unreal Engine as well. You know, help us out with this because, um, you know, uh, otherwise we're we're going to be uh, um, unsure of what we're going to be doing when we actually get to, you know, working with the engine itself, right? So. Right. Uh, but obviously, you know, uh, they're not necessarily going to be here on SN. <laughs> it's like, you know, you know, we can complain all we want, but, you know, they're not, they're not necessarily going to be here on SN. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so it's, it's just kind of unfortunate that, um, we're in a sense dealing with, um, dealing with a tutorial that you know might have topics that we're not very familiar with and they don't really go into full detail on you know or basically say hey you need to be a sound engineer to understand this it's like okay but what if we're not <laughs> you know it's like oh well good luck and it's like ah. <laughs> what are you doing Stop that. Um, okay, but I think that's where we're going to go ahead and uh, close on down for uh, for tonight on this. Yeah. So, um, let's see. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll pick this back up again tomorrow. Uh, so thank you very much for watching there everybody I think we'll go ahead and close on down on this so I appreciate everybody being here for this particular topic um, like I said if there's anything that well like you know you and I were, were we we got a little bit enough about the the information that we kind of uh, went over yeah uh, but maybe um, maybe if we understood something wrong, then maybe correct us down in the comments below and what it indeed. actually might have been and what we got wrong. Indeed. That's kind of what I was <laughs> going for. <laughs> Nicely done there, Blackheart. Thank you for saying exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know... Also, you know, help us out with the YouTube algorithm, you know, with the like, comment, subscribe, and all that kind of jazz. That would be fantastic for, for us. That would help us out. Uh, check out our descriptions, you know, 
both Blackheart and mine's descriptions in these videos that we upload onto YouTube. Um, check out the links contained in there. Check out each our, uh, each of our channels. Help us out that way. Um, so if you're watching this on Blackheart, go check out my channel. Or if you're checking out my channel, go check out Blackheart. You know, vice versa. So. Um, and um, we look forward to any kind of comments that you all leave. So hopefully don't be afraid to you know, leave any comments. We we really would appreciate those. So yeah. Um, but I, that's where we're gonna go ahead and end this video, or at least you know on my end. Um, I'll I'll let you kind of do your own end ending, my friend. <laughs> no, um, but minute, it'll do it. <laughs> Yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, end the stage here, my friend. So you take care of yourself, and I'll see you in about an hour for Warframe. Yep. Um, you go and get yourself some food. Yeah. And I'll see you in a little bit, okay? Sure. See you in a little bit. All right, man. Take Bye. care. Bye. Okay, the stage is closed. And, yeah... That is going to be it for today's Unreal Engine's stream. I'm going to end this as per usual and go get myself some food. And I'll be back in, like you said, in roughly an hour uh, for some Warframe. So, let's see. Let me check something out. Okay, no, nothing good. So, I guess I'll be seeing you guys in a little bit. Bye-bye for now!